everyone. Happy 4.30 and January 14th at 4.30. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing well today. This is another update from Great Lakes Weather. We're doing an update on the pattern change that appears to be coming for um, late January and then into February and the potential winter storms that could be coming along with that. We're going to look at a few models, get a comparison of what they look like. Again, these models do show the long range, so it may not entirely reflect what could happen during that time but again some model consistency does show that there could be some winter storms so we're gonna look at them real quick all right make sure to subscribe and stay updated and i'll continue to provide updates on winter storms and the potential for how much snowfall we're going to get as they move into the area and so stay tuned for updates in that regard all right we are going to get started get right to it so let's go to the latest models all right so this is pivotalweather.com again this information is accessible freely accessible to you so you could use it however um, you may need to but we're gonna look at it real quick and get a little bit of a model analysis so here we have the 500 millibar on my height anomaly so what that shows is the higher levels in the atmosphere what is going to be moving through in the upper levels um, the ridges and troughs that have an influence on our weather and the ridges are usually associated with warmer weather associated with high pressure systems aloft which allow for lower pressure on the ground causing that air to warm and rise so that's what causes those the ridges and then the troughs are associated with low pressure systems aloft and where there's low pressure again that's going to be cooler air at the surface when a high pressure system on the ground alright so this is what is shown on the height anomaly so this ridge is building into parts of the United States today alright it's in central United States alright I want to show you what's going to happen with these particular with this particular setup. Right now, up here, you do have some cooler air masses settling over the western part of the United United States. Um, California has just been dumped on 30 inches of rain or more over the past couple of days. They've gotten so much rain, a lot of devast a lot of devastating flooding as a result of that rainfall that they've been getting from that atmospheric river. What's going to happen here is what I'm looking at. We're going to see a buildup of high pressure in this general area up here excuse me, close to the end of January. So once that comes around, that's going to lead to some impacts for our area as there's going to be some Arctic air digging down into parts of the United States, or at least cooler air. I wouldn't say Arctic air just yet. But you do see kind of the troughs that start to develop um, some across parts of the United States. You see them start to deepen as they get down into Texas and then start to lift off to the northeast towards parts of the Great Lakes region. And then it starts to weaken as it goes into that area but you do see the second trough back here on the western part of the United States it looks like a series of just troughs that are just gonna dig into parts of the eastern United States and that's going to lead to impacts on our weather for quite for a multiple winter storm potentials again going to the long range we can't really say that just yet but that's what is currently being shown by the models and then you see over here in this area you've got that large ridge that's building into parts uh, just south of Alaska. This is something that can have an impact in regards to um, the temperatures that we see. It's likely that high pressure digging into this area and also this area up here could allow for Arctic air to surge down into the United States. This is the typical pattern um, when these high with when these ridges form in this general area so it's gonna be something we're gonna have to watch as we get closer into late January and into early February so looks like the warm mild winter we've had for January is starting to come to an end and then that cooler weather is starting to make its way into the continental United States over the next couple of weeks so let's actually look at what that's gonna do for our general area so you do have this this precipitation type map that is showing these potential winter storms you see this low pressure system that is sort of kind of start of popping up over the Oklahoma Panhandle this Colorado low that's just sitting over here this low is actually going to lift farther north than the area but it will likely bring some rain on Monday night Tuesday morning across parts of the Great Lakes region and it looks like some some places could even see some severe storms in western Illinois there is actually some severe potential some low-level wind shear that could possibly bring some gusty winds to that area um, SBC hasn't really said anything about um, the a strong severe weather potential for that area but that low does seem to have a little bit of energy with it and then you see another low it's kind of a series of just lows from the south from the western United States that's going to trail and train into our area you do see some thunderstorms beginning to develop across parts of southern Indiana and Kentucky all the way down towards Mississippi and then that that northern edge where that northern edge lands is really what's going to tell us how much snow we get 
from this particular storm. But you do see that, that the snow does seem to overtake much of southern Michigan and then even at the tip of northern Indiana and then into Chicago as well. It looks like Thursday, Thursday morning, we will start to see some snow across parts of the area. And it looks like it may continue for over at least a several hours, heavy snow, according to what these models are saying. And again, th these could change here and there, depending on how the models change once we get closer to the event really tell us what how much snow we're going to get then we get to the long range again i'm going to show you the long range what is being shown by the models the models are showing additional development of um, low pressure systems that could lift off to the northeast as that pattern change continues to take shape across the continent of the united states lifting off and then this one appears to begin to impact parts of ohio including Central Ohio, Cedarville would be included in this, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, all, all these places could start to see some snow. You get a sounding from that. You have a very tight gradient between the temperature and dew points with the dendritic growth zone up higher in the levels of the atmosphere. does show that snow potential. Up really high in the atmosphere means it's the temperature, which means you're going to get those really um, thick flakes um, when the temperature is that warm and you have that dendritic growth zone up there, temperature of about freezing but still enough to drive snow formation up high in that area of the atmosphere so it does look like that's going to be some heavy snow across that area then that lifts off again brings looks like a um, northeastern storm pattern across parts of Maine New Hampshire those areas that lifts off to the northeast and the one that's being projected by the long range again this this one seems a little bit intense but it still does show more snow on January 26th or January 25th at this point you get a sounding from this general area it does show that dendritic growth zone you do have that potential for some snow in this area and looks like it could be quite windy with this particular low as well as it moves off to the northeast but it does show again another shot of heavy snow across parts of the Great Lakes region so it's showing multiple snow events possible and then as I said before that Arctic dip in the that Arctic dip from the north is really going to be possible as we get towards the end of January and into February, and then winter will finally settle in for the remainder of the season. It's really been a mild winter. We've had temperatures in the upper 30s, low 40s, which mid 40s even as well, which is abnormally warm, and it's been like that for quite, quite the quite the time in the past couple of weeks of January. So it's looking like that's going to change relatively soon, and then we'll have that. Um, train of possible winter storms according to the models that could potentially occur. We're going to compare it to the other ones but this is what the GFS is currently showing. I'm backtracking it right now as you can tell but the time frames for these storms again rain potential on Monday night into Tuesday it looks like and then as we get later on we do see that snow potential return possibly Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening not sure about snow accumulations just yet we're too far out to make that determination but you go farther out you do see another low begin to form that could impact parts of Ohio, bringing heavy snow to that general area. Progressing off to the northeast, you do have that next winter storm that could occur Thursday, January 26th. This one is going to be one that's probably going to change quite a bit as we get closer to it because it's 276 hours out. So it's going to be a while before we actually get a firm idea of what's going to happen with that one. And then another snowfall looking like on the 28th associated with another low that kind of comes back off the previous low so lots to lots to look at and consider with when it comes to the upcoming models with these particular snow, storm events um, I will take a look at a general estimate of snowfall we're not I'm not gonna show any snowfall totals because can't really do that just yet but some models are showing the first the first snowfall that would likely be Thursday afternoon into into Friday will dump uh, some some snow across parts of lower Michigan central Michigan especially quite a bit of snow there and then that second storm uh, does appear to bring an impact to parts of Ohio as I said before it does look like Ohio could see the snow from that according to what these current models are saying and then you get farther out you do see that next storm that may dump even more snow across parts of northwestern Indiana Chicago area and then also parts of southern Michigan so next one also then will come in it does look like there's going to be a decent chunk of snow over the next three weeks that's pretty much all I can say there followed by that Arctic air that could move in from the north later on so I do see a pattern change coming and it's gonna bring in some snow along with it as well let's compare it to the Euro model 
real quick. I believe the Euro model is the next one. Oh, the Kachera ratio. I'm not going to show that because, again, snowfall totals can't be certain just yet. Here's the Euro model. Let's get a comparison of what could happen. Again, it does show that rainfall potential. And this is the model that actually does show a few pop-up thunderstorms across parts of western Illinois. If we take a look at the sounding of that, it does show that low-level wind shear. It does look pretty cold, though. I don't really see the energy. Actually, let's look at that now. It does show that marginal severe potential, and you do have temperatures in the mid-upper 50s. It's a cool air event, but it does show that there could be some severe weather uh, connected to that particular band of rain right in front of the low. So that could initiate that. It might even make it into parts of Michigan and Indiana. doesn't show the severe weather potential after that, but it does look like those storms may maintain enough energy to get into parts of Michigan and Indiana on Tuesday on Monday night into Tuesday. So that could be something that we might be able to see later on. But progressing it forward, as we get into Thursday, that winter storm potential still existing once again. Let's actually zoom in on that real quick. Let's go to um, the regional graphic for the, United, for the Midwest, and let's go back to that time, time frame. All right, here's that storm that's moving in. It looks like it's going to be rather tricky, according to the Euro. It looks like it could start off as rain, with followed by a transition to freezing rain, then snow. So that could actually cause a mess for Thursday travel, and even maybe into Friday travel, as that snow is expected to last through the night on Friday, associated with some lake effect activity that could evolve from this. And then it tends to move out of the area Friday morning into the day on Friday. It looks like it could be relatively better weather then you got that snow some light snow possibly moving in associated with this low and this looks like freezing rain according to what the euro is saying on a sunday you get a sounding of this particular setup and it shows the best cast precip type is going to be snow so that that seems a bit more legitimate it does seem like there could be some snow associated with this line looks like a rain snow mix um, according to what these long range models are saying on Sunday, then you go farther off, and it doesn't really go as far as January 26th to give us updates on that neck, that possible third winter storm, according to what the models are saying. So, progressing it further, not looking at the total snowfall just yet. GDPS also showing some similarities with this particular event. So, you do have that rainfall that's moving through on Tuesday into Wednesday. You do have that winter storm. The one thing I noticed about the GDPS is that it displaces it a little bit farther north than the Euro and the GFS models. So there is some consistency with these models and what these winter storms could and how these winter storms could occur. This one on Monday the 24th is very far displaced to the north and it's deeper of a low, which means there will likely be more winds with it. So this could be more of a winter storm event for parts of the Upper Peninsula in Wisconsin if the GDPS tends to be the more viable route. But Given that the Euro and the GFS both agree that it's going to be farther south, I do think this could be displaced farther to the south. But again, as I said before, this is a long-range analysis, so it could, it will very likely have shifts and um, changes as we get to the actual event itself. So looking at all these models, it seems like there are, is going to be some changes in the activity over the past couple of weeks. It's been rather boring in terms of weather across parts of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. I think there were some severe thunderstorms in southern Ohio but that was a isolated event in that area but now we're going to see that cooler weather move in and that snow potential so that's what's currently looking that's what we're currently looking at with the latest models so make sure to stay updated make sure to subscribe we will keep you updated on the snowfall and the snowfall potential that is coming this way this week and the potential for snow accumulations later on which could very well be possible given the pattern shift that is looking that it's looking it will come into place so thanks to everyone for watching hopefully this video was helpful and beneficial and i will see you all next time